Let's go ahead and derive this equation for the thermal efficiency of the air standard Brayton cycle assuming constant specific heats. Well, right away what I need to do is I need to sketch. I'm going to talk about the compressor, the burner, the turbine, and the heat exchanger. I know I'm just repeating everything, but I think it's pretty good to repeat it. So this is state one, state two, state three, and state four. And we know what the pressures are. Isn't P2 is equal to P3? That's a critical observation. And P1 is equal to P4. That's a critical observation. And if we're using constant specific heats, we know what is T2 divided by T1. That's my P2 over P1 to the K minus 1 over K. Likewise, I'm just repeating what we did, is what about T4 compared to T3? Isn't that the P4 divided by P3 to the K minus 1 over K, which is P4 is equal to P1, and P3 is equal to P2 to the K minus 1 over K. This is a critical observation right now. And you say, look it, what happens if I take T4 divided by T3 and I multiply T2 divided by T1? Can you see what that is? Hopefully you see that. So this is equal to 1. Now, how are we going to derive this equation? Well, you start with what is the definition of the thermal efficiency. Isn't it work net of the cycle divided by Q in? Can we replace work net by Q net? So Q net divided by Q in is Q net equal to Q in. And I'm going to put a minus on the Q out divided by Q in. I know that this is a positive Q in right here. And this is a positive Q out right there. That's why I put a negative in front of that Q out. Does that look good? So now this thermal efficiency is 1 minus Q out divided by Q in. Some people said I could have started there. Yeah, you could have, probably, if you were... The textbook often jumps to that version for the thermal efficiency. You can see the form is starting to take shape. You have 1 minus something. Look at this, 1 minus something. So we're on the right track. Okay, so now let's go ahead and replace what is Q out in terms of our temperatures and our specific heat. Isn't it C sub P? T4 minus T1? Is that what Q out is? All right. And then C sub P for Q in, it'll be T3 minus, whoops, T3 minus T2. Can you cancel the specific heats? Looks great. Now you say to yourself, okay, well, I'm going to have one minus. I'm going to pull out T1 out of the numerator. And I'm going to pull T2 out of the denominator. And so in the numerator, we'll have T4 divided by T1 minus 1. And we'll have T3 divided by T2 minus 1. That doesn't seem like it's all that efficient, but I can replace what is this T1 over T2. Right? So if we do that, we have 1 minus... And then we'll put it down here. We'll put P2 over P1 to the K minus 1 over K. And we're left with this T4 over T1 minus 1. I'm kind of writing it a little funny here. Divided by T3 over T2 minus 1. So what we do here is we say, hmm, put divide by T3 multiplied by T3, didn't change anything. Then we'll put divide by T2 multiplied by T2. So we just expanded what T4 over T1 is, isn't it? And now you look and you say, aha, T4 over T3 times T2 over T1 is just 1. <laughs> And so the whole numerator is exactly the same as the denominator. They're both the same. They're both equal. That ratio is 1. And so now the thermal efficiency is just 1 minus 1 over the high pressure over the low pressure, the pressure ratio to the K minus 1 over K. 
qed, what we set out to show has been shown.